So to start off with, let's define a circumnavigation. It's pretty simple. You take a line of longitude and you have to cross that twice, going the same direction, having sailed all the way around the world. And that's it. So what does it take and how do you do it? I'm Ben, that's Ashley. Together, we did the unimaginable. We sold everything and then set off on a mission to sail around the world. Civilization, see you later. Twenty countries later, and over 25,000 nautical miles, we are only halfway around the world. I have no idea what's going to happen. Subscribe to follow the adventure as we finish this lap. So we're in the trade winds right now. We're just south of the equator in Indonesia, heading to Borneo. And it's gorgeous. It's 10 to 20 knots. We're going downwind. It's warm. This is where we like to stay. This is our preferred way of sailing around the world. Whoa, we're going fast right now. Let's back up for a second. We just mentioned the trade winds. In order to fully understand this, and more specifically, the different routes sailors choose to circumnavigate, we first need to understand the distinct wind belts on this planet. Around the equator, we have the doldrums, no to very little wind. To either side, we have the trade winds. These are typically steady 10 to 20 knots. Beautiful, warm conditions, always blowing from the east to the west. Once you venture further north or south, you will find westerly winds. But. There's a small problem with the trade wind belts and that's something called hurricanes. You see, hurricanes are the same thing as typhoons, as cyclones, and each region of the earth has its own season for these cyclones, typhoons. When the earth's axis shifts, it creates summer on one side of the equator. And as a result, that trade wind belt region will heat up and start spawning these tropical storms. There's a total of seven cyclone regions around the world, each defined by a season, which tends to peak in late summer. There's the Atlantic hurricane season, Eastern Pacific hurricane season, Northwest Pacific typhoon season, the North Indian cyclone season. Now, on either side of the equator, they spin in different directions, but other than that, there's not much difference. Southwest and Southeast Indian Ocean Cyclone Seasons, and finally, the Southwest Pacific Cyclone Season. And that basically dictates where we go and when we go, because we have to get out of the cyclone belts when it starts to heat up for insurance purposes and for our own safety. Every time the season switches to be summer, north of the equator, we head south of the equator. Just recently, we came down from the Philippines south of the equator into Indonesia, and the reason for that was it was heating up and it was typhoon season up there. So, yeah. We're like halfway between basically Lombok or Bali and Borneo, and we're just coming up over this bank. It's about 50 meters deep. There's another fishing boat here. Reminds me of the Philippine fishing boat that we uh, did a tour of when we first made landfall there. Uh, it's kind of cool, man. I'm gonna do a really close drive-by. It's cool, man. They're towing like a huge net. Like this thing must weigh like so much because you can see like the prop wash coming up. It's it's crazy, but so beautiful. The colors are like amazing. We gotta find these on shore. Like once we make landfall in another day or two here, I'm gonna go scout one of these out and see what they're all about. See what they're catching. It's about five guys on board. They're all smiling. They're all waving. They're happy. It's good, it's good to see that out here. No pirates around here. Now there's a slight difference between how we sail around the world and how the fastest boat sails around. See, boats like the Volvo Ocean Racing boats will actually overtake these lows. They will go faster than the storm and use that to their advantage because they want as much wind as possible. We're a little bit different. We don't really like those things. The other big factor in deciding which route to take is going upwind versus going downwind. See, right now we're going downwind. The waves are from behind, the wind's from behind. It's a gorgeous sleigh ride. Going upwind is a completely different story. It's wet, it's slow, and it's grueling. Like, we don't really like to go upwind. 
Given all these factors, we sail westward, mostly inside the trade wind belt. We pull over as often as possible, experience as many new cultures along the way, discover different ways of life. It's a pretty sweet way to travel the world. Just sail your house from one country to the next. Put the spinnaker up. It's, uh, it's about 15 knots. It's not too windy, but uh, we're flying, man. It's awesome. Check this thing out. sailing around the world you need like all sorts of kinds of sails like you need spinnakers like this thing you need main sails like that big sail right there and then you have a little sail up front as well and that's because there's different wind angles like the wind comes from all sorts of directions so you need to have different sails for different wind strengths so we often have to sail overnight so many times we're crossing oceans or seas this is the java sea for example but any ocean and any sea and there's no island in the middle, there's no place to pull over in the middle of the night, so we sail overnight. And it's one of the things I love. You get to watch the sun set into the ocean, the moon rise over the other side, and the stars come up. Sailing night is one of the most beautiful things you get to experience out here. One of the things we always have to watch out for is other traffic, like that freighter right there. And that's fine during the day, it's easy, you just look around. But at night, we use lights like these on the front of our boat. We have green on one side, on the right hand side, and red on the other side. And then there's a white light on the back of the boat. And this freighter will have the same lights, except a couple more, so that we can tell where he's going and if we're gonna collide. And actually I lied, cause not everyone uses those red and green lights. There's boats like those boats, and there's squid boats, they catch squid and they just have really, really bright lights at night. It's kind of crazy. What's really crazy is that during the daytime, you can't see that thing. So all of a sudden it just turned dark and the lights came on and there's a boat there and we had no idea. Things have gone a bit tricky. A tug just passed in front of us and then there's a freighter heading forward towards us. We're at about 11 knots. So their, their speed is 11 knots and I'm trying to keep our speed at about eight knots and we're trying to cross in front of them. Right now I can see it's red lights, which means we're seeing it's port side, which means it's still gonna cross in front of us. I can't wait till the moment when I see the red and green together and then eventually just the green. And that'll mean I'm ahead of it. And then I gotta turn it off because I'm heading straight for a fishing boat. <laughs> it's a bit nuts out here, I'm not gonna lie. Like I think it's the, the combination of the tankers and fishing boats. If they were all just fishing boats, it's no big deal because you can just like weave in and out of them. <laughs> we're made it, we made it, it's okay. So we are just coming into Kumai. Um, it's really shallow as we come in here. It's super shallow. It's only like 13 meters deep. And it's only been 13 meters forever. There's a, a sandbar at the river and the sandbar is only gonna be two meters deep. So, what's up with these waves all of a sudden? Anyway. Should be an interesting little uh, stretch in here. One of the big questions that we often face when we get into a port like this is, where the heck do you take the dinghy? I have no idea. Kumai is a crazy place. There's all of these concrete buildings. They look like jails, but they're actually just bird houses. They're huge bird high rises. They're for the swiftlets and the swiftlets uh, make these little nests that are a delicacy in China, so they export them from here. It's crazy. You know what's crazy about the swiftlets though? They make the nests from their spit, and that's what makes the nest so good, and then it makes like a jelly soup. I don't know, man. You know what's crazy is that there's the prayer call happening right now, but these birdhouses, they also have speakers coming out of them with bird sounds to try and attract the birds to come nest there. Pretty, pretty crazy spot, man. It's crazy the towns you stumble into these days. 